Now I'm gonna leave the vacuum pump off just so it doesn't make noise and so you can hear what I'm talking about. But uh, while we have the system on a vacuum, then we wanna go ahead and finish our electrical connections or our line and low voltage. And so I'm gonna take my 11 and one screwdriver and open up the control cabinet. And we're going to act like our vacuum pump is still running. Um, <laughs> be careful with the screws. Uh, Find a good place to put them where you're not going to lose the screws. There's nothing I dislike more than showing up to a brand new install and we're missing screws already. So as you take the screws out, find a good place to store those. Next, we want to route our whip uh, with the electrical wire and the high voltage um, over to the unit. We want it to be nice and neat. I like to get it down here and route it with my line set. Uh, so this is gonna be too long when we run that around. So we'll wanna mark that for where we wanna cut, but I'm going to come right here and follow my line set. We wanna come up into this hole right here. There are two in this one. Uh, this one goes into our low voltage compartment. And the one over here goes up into our contactor. That's where our high voltage is going to be going. And so I'm gonna, once I get a good measurement on that, I'm gonna get a mark, if I can find my Sharpie. And so we're gonna have to shorten this whip and uh, we'll look at how we cut that without cutting into our wire. So I'm gonna take my plastic tubing cutter, put it up find my mark. I'm just going to cut just deep enough to barely start getting through the plastic and start working that around. So we don't really want to go all the way through the pipe at this point. We just want to get enough of a scar there. And we can hopefully just pull that apart without ever touching the wire that's inside. So now I do not want that uh, 90 that was on there. Um, I would rather have a straight fitting that comes straight over and makes a nice clean shot straight up into uh, the control cabinet. And so I went and got us a half inch um, straight connector. And so I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through. Uh, don't wanna go through this way. That'll be upside down once we get into it. So uh, we wanna thread in or start in from the long thread side down to the fitting. Oops, I missed the ground wire. So this one, we just have to loosen up this nut. Snug that all the way, seat it all the way in. Tighten it back down. And then we're gonna take off this retainer nut it out of the way for now. I'm going to feed my wires through. And start my retainer nut back on. And once I get that tight just for my fingers, I'm going to take my screwdriver in the same way we did at the disconnect. Take and push on the wings of that retainer clip. And then for our control wire, our thermostat wire, um, we also want that to be in a conduit. That's just going to make for a much better looking job and a much longer lasting job, more uh, maintenance free, service free. Um, we get a lot of calls where People have either cut into a thermostat wire with a weed eater or an animal chews through it. And so it's just best to have that in a, a flexible conduit, the same as we do our high voltage. And so I've already made us another um, electrical whip for the end here on it. So I'm going to take the retainer nut off of that. Set it to the side for now, but we'll need to measure that the same as we did with our 
we want to follow that same route as well. So we're gonna say somewhere around here. Let me stick back in the wall a little ways. I'm not even gonna mark that. I'm just gonna hold it by my thumb. It doesn't have to be very precise. So uh, before we put that wire into our flex, just a little trick that'll make that a whole lot easier to feed through is just to make the end rounded. When it's, when it's straight like that, there's a lot of places this edge can catch. But if you round that off and make a nice little rounded end, it'll push through so much easier. So then we're gonna feed that all the way through until it comes out the other end. Is. And then we will feed that into our feed that in here. And I'm going to take my retainer nut, slide back down over the wire. And again, I'm doing this a little bit upside down, so it might be a little tricky. All right. So once we have both of them up in here. We can uh, tidy it up to our line set, make it look good. So I'm gonna use wire ties for that. Let me get a couple wire ties ready. We want to start, I like to start at the top and put them together up here. Just wrap them together. together first and then we can go back through and secure it to our line set. As we can do that just for aesthetically you want to try to keep these fairly equidistant. And it looks like we did it on purpose with an accident. And then before um, securing that to the line set, I'm going to go ahead and cut these little tails off, I call them. Just using the wire strippers. Uh, we don't have to get all the way down in the cutter. You can actually use the stripping notches to uh, cut that fairly easy. And then I'm going to take some wire ties to secure that to the line set. And uh, again, probably best just to go right at the... Uh, the wire ties that we put on the system. That way we don't have a hodgepodge of wire ties everywhere. And so again, we're wanting this to look very neat when we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here. Uh, that one. We'll get another one here. So I went on the left-hand side of this one. I'm going to go on the left-hand side of this one. I want to get a little bit of a curve there. Get them up snug. Just pull those together. And then I'm going to do the same. Take my strippers, cut those tails off. And that doesn't look too bad. 